Problem 538. Calculate the x-intercepts for the graph of each function below. Letter A. y equals the quantity of x minus 2 times the quantity of x plus 1. Trying to find the x-intercepts. So, remember, x-intercepts. This is our x-axis here. Runs along here horizontally. Every single point on the x-axis has an x-coordinate and then a zero for y. So what we're going to do here is we are going to think about, well, if y is zero, what do we have to do to solve this? So let's do that here. Letter A. Instead of having y in here, and this, this would be a parabola if we took this and we multiply the binomials together, you'd see that we would have an x squared term here, which makes it quadratic. So let's put our zero in for y. We've got zero equals the quantity of x minus 2 times the quantity of x plus 1. Well, now that we have a binomial times a binomial and it equals 0, we're going to use the zero product property. The zero product property, remember, states that if I have two factors here and they multiply and give a product of zero, that means that one of the two factors has to be zero. So we just need to figure out what value of x would make each factor equal to zero. Easiest way to do that, remember, is to set each factor equal to zero and solve them. x minus 2 equals zero. Obviously, x would equal 2. So we're talking about the point 2, 0. And on this one, we subtract 1 from each side. And we get x equals negative 1. So the other point we're dealing with is the point negative 1, 0. If you substitute the values back in, if you put negative 1 back in here, negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Negative 1 minus negative 2 is negative 3. 0 times negative 3 is 0. Same thing over here. Put in 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. 2 plus 1 is 3. 0 times 3 is 0. So you know that you have the correct points. So we wanted us to calculate them there. Just remember, that would be like saying, okay, we've got this point right here. And we've got this point right here. We should have a parabola that extends upward through these two points. If you want to check it, pull out your graphing calculator. Okay, all you got to do here is, let's go in, and let's just graph it. We've got x minus 2, and then we're multiplying that times the quantity of x plus 1. Go ahead and graph it. You'll see there's the parabola there. And if we want to check to figure out where the uh, the zeros are, the roots, a couple ways it can be done. You can do second table. And depending on how your table's set up, see mine's way off there. If it intersects at points that are integers, if your calculator is set up that way, you'll see negative 1, 0. That's what we have. We also have 2, 0, just like we've got over here. You can also calculate them on the calculator. You can do second trace. You can go to where it says 0 here, so choice number 2. And if we want to find the left 0, I'm going to go over here. It wants me to create a boundary line. It wants to know where to look between. So let's make our left boundary here to the left of it. So you see it creates kind of that boundary line. Let's move it also over to the right so that that 0, that root, that x-intercept is right in between here. So let's hit Enter. I'll hit Enter one more time. It will calculate, and it tells us that the root, or the 0 here, is negative 1, which we already know. You can do the same thing with the other one there. Take it. You can do second 
trace. Once again, number two. Let's create a left boundary here. Let's just do about right here because we're looking at this x-intercept. And then we can take it and we can move it over on the right side of that x-intercept. Hit enter. And it should fall between those two boundary lines. Hit enter one more time. And you get 2, 0. That's what we have. All right, let's jump back into the second one. y equals 2x squared plus 16x plus 30. So first things first, we're looking for the x-intercepts. We need to put 0 in for our y. So we have 0 is equal to 2x squared plus 16x plus 30. Now, as we look at this one here, we want to end up solving this. So first thing we want to check is, does it factor? And it does. There is a greatest common factor of 2 in each of these terms. So let's go ahead and factor out a 2. So we're going to have 2 times the quantity of 2 times what is 2x squared? That would be x squared. 2 times 8x gives us 16x, and 2 times 15 gives us 30. Now we can look at our remaining trinomial, and we can ask ourselves, does this factor? And in this case, it does again. Remember, we've got 0 equals 2, and this trinomial should factor into two binomials. And you can use the generic rectangle if you would like to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do this for time's sake and just get through it. I know that when I multiply the first terms, I should get x squared, so this has to be x. This has to be x. And when I multiply the last two terms, I should get positive 15. So two numbers that multiply to give me 15 and have a sum of 8 would be 5 and 3, both of them being positive there. And now we're thinking about our zero product property again. We have 2 times something times something equals zero. Well, obviously, 2 is not the number that would cause the product to be zero. So we have to look at x plus 5 and x plus 3. So what would make x plus 5 equal zero? And what would make x plus 3 equal zero? Well, if we subtract our 5 from each side, we end up here with x equals negative 5. So we're talking about the point negative 5, 0. Over here we subtract 3 from each side and we're going to end up with x equals negative 3. So negative 3, 0. These are our two x-intercepts. So one of them being 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 right about here. The other one being 1, 2, 3 about right there. Now to check it, again, remember you can go on your calculator here and you can type it in. I would type in the original one here just in case you made a mistake in your factoring. Let's go in here. Let's do 2x squared plus 16x plus 30. Let's hit graph. You'll see this is where it looks like our function is here. You could do the same thing we did last time, or you could check it here another way. I'll show you another method. If I already know that I think it's at negative 5, 0 and negative 3, 0, I can do trace. I didn't press second, so I'm going to press trace. And that'll allow me to input a value. If I said negative 5, I want to know what is my output when x is negative 5. I hit enter. And it tells me it's 0. I press trace again here, and I want to say, what is my output when negative 3 is my input? Put in my negative 3, I hit enter, and it tells me my output is 0. So another way to check to make sure we're right. So just one last little thing to recap here. For letter A, we had the points 2, 0 and negative 1, 0 as our x-intercepts. Letter B here, 
Actually, I'll rewrite these ones down here together. We had negative 5, 0. And we had negative 3, 0. Those were our x-intercepts for the second one. This is problem 5-38. Hopefully this helped answer any questions you had.